All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob, Smirking Gun Reviews, doing something that I didn't think I was doing today. I'm so happy I am, though, and that is we are bringing back Creature Season 3, Episode 1, Angelville. Holy crap, how awesome is it that this show is back? If I swear, I'm sorry. Not sorry. So, <laughs> full spoilers. But before I get into spoilers, is this episode good? Fucking A right it is. It is. I'm just so happy that this show's back. See how smiley he is? That's how I feel. Um, so, uh, it's just... It's been a while. Alright, so... Let's just jump right in. Okay, so yes, it's very good. It is different. Each uh, season premiere has had a different tone. The first one was like crazy sci-fi. All of a sudden, thing goes into a dude. He blows the fuck up. I was, you know, that really gets your attention. Season two, you've got the great car chase with Come on Eileen, and there's fun. It's just fun. And then the brutality of the whole cars and everything just going nuts. This, we started out with the little prelude to what the season's going to kind of look like, and that is seeing what Angelville it was like in its heyday for a second, and our introduction to Jesse's mother, and to like uh, the introducing of Grandma Langell, and Jody, and TC, and this whole fucked up Louisiana experience. So we see them back in the day, they're running their little like Louisiana Bayou, like I don't know, like a little kind of like Santa's Village kind of place. Where, you know, they take little tours around the like bayou and tell voodoo stories and stuff while the real voodoo is going on in the house. Where Grandma Langeau will make a spell for you, but at a price. Um, that this isn't, you know, you make a deal with the devil, you're going to get burned kind of situation. You know, she can help you, but it's not altruistic. It is self-serving. And it will have a high cost, just like this guy that comes in there and you can tell he looks really bad. Maybe things were good for a while, but at this point, whatever he had done, he wishes he could take it back and he can't. So, uh, we, we see that, you know, Jesse's mother is upset about this. Real quickly though, like Betty Buckley who plays uh, Grandma Angel, it's so crazy, that creepiness uh, where they show her in just dark. Like, just in the sitting down, like, just evil. This omnipresence. And it made me think of the trailer for The Nun, where you see the picture of the nun's face in darkness, and but you can see the outline and just the evil, and you just kind of go get that creepy, like, ugh, vibe from it. Um, uh, she definitely, though, looks... She does not look as bad as she does in the comic. In the comic, oh my god, she is just this twisted-up-looking old woman. Ooh, like, I can't even... Ugh, I mean, I, the, the, you look at it and she looks dead. She looks like a zombie kind of walking around. In this, she looks a lot more normal. Um, but anyway, you know, Jesse's mother, you know, she's she wants to get out of there. She tries to get out. They can't. They, they catch her. They bring her back. You know, she's been hiding this picture of Jesse as a baby. You know, she tries to eat it. Grandma Angel. Unable to, even for her daughter, you know, she has to control everything. She wants everything. She's possessive. She wants it. She's just totally filled with self-interest. Uh, I feel like her power kind of is derived and is more potent through her relatives. So finding a baby would be, you know, very important to her power, you know, and keep her keeping power. Um, so... You know, Jesse's mother has no idea how far she'll go, and when she cuts her open to get the picture out, it's just dark. And this show is dark, and I like dark, but it's just kind of a it was a weird tone to take for this, you know, season. I was I was ready for the big like just cool preacher's back scene. But this is not that. And I, you know, like I said, I feel like it's gonna set the tone. For a lot of this, I mean, we're going to still see a lot of humor, a lot of crazy action, and we see some of that here in this episode, but 
it's just a different kind of tone. Not in a bad way, just different. Um, so, you know, and they, the fact that they, she won't sew her up after she's cut her open and they say put her in the machine, which I have no idea what the hell that means. So, boom, we jump to Jesse. Uh, that's, you know, he's running through the house trying to find, you know, Grandma Langell. And uh, the, we, we get this kind of uh, resolution right away for something that's been coming um, since the beginning, since like in season one, when uh, Tulip slept with, God, why I can't believe I am forgetting my favorite vampire in the world's name. Holy crap. What the hell is his name? Cassidy, what the hell is wrong with me? I can't remember Cassidy's name. So anyway, they get it on the table that Cassidy slept with Tulip. What happens? I mean, and I like the way that they he reveals it because he's pissed. You know, he calls Jesse a scumbag. You know, he's like, I could have made her a, one of you know a vampire. I could have saved her life, but you know, you wouldn't let it happen. And it kind of finally comes out. You know, well, hey man. She liked me enough to shag me way back in the day. And of course, they end up in a big-ass brawl, which is always just fun to watch these two go at because Jesse's strong and Cassidy's a vampire. And in the background, you see Grandma Langell has suddenly appeared. And TC, this guy, shows, you know, the kind of like the, I don't know what you want to call him, the groundskeeper type character of Angelville that's been still hanging around, you know, he puts a stop to the to the fight, sort of, and Jesse, you know, is trying to convince Grandma Langell that they need to bring Tulip back to life. There's a lot of ominous, like, you need to do this for me, a lot of history behind these, like, demands. So, you know, we're going to see a lot, I mean, a lot more stuff from back in those days. Uh, more from when he was a kid, probably more scenes of before he was there, of how this place was ran, how it fell apart, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you can just tell she's holding all the cards. And then even with, when she agrees to this, this is her getting what she wanted. She wanted him back, you know, he's run away and come back, run away and come back. And, you know, in her mind, you know, they've been forced to live in squalor when really they're just predators, opportunists scumbags that just want to, you know, take from other people to, for their own benefit. But Jesse, as he's done in the past, is willing to do anything, even make really bad decisions to, you know, get what he needs, what he feels like he needs to do. And so here, there, that goes off again. That's just great. <laughs> well, I think you got the gist of what was behind me anyway, right? So anyway, there we go. Uh, Jesse has, you know, she finally agrees. Jesse tells Cassie to go get some of Tula's favorite things. They kind of argue some more. Um, we get to be introduced to Jody, who, uh, well, we've seen him in the flashback, but uh, he's this huge dude. Um, again, TC and, and Jody look a lot like their comic counterparts. But in their counterparts in the comic, these guys are just like Looney Tunes, Looney Tunes, like very cartoonish. Um, and so uh, these guys, are, they seem a little more grounded, even though they're still kind of bizarre. Um, and so Jesse and Jody have to go find this special oil. Uh, and so Jody takes them to this place where they can get it, uh, where Jody proceeds to start a huge fight. You can, you get to see how tough uh, Jody is here by just dropping dudes like like nothing um, well you know Jesse's around the back and you can just hear the violence and people flying against the car door and glass flying and jumping off the roof of the car to kick a guy in the face that's gonna shoot Jesse just <laughs> the guy's a you guys no joke and so they, they get the oil they come back to the Angelville and then Jody wants to basically, you know, hash out old, you know, old wounds. Um, you know, I, I don't know what this guy has against Jesse because they killed Jesse's father and they shot him in the head. 
you know, if anybody's got an axe to grab. But see, these, these type of people, these type of grifters, these scumbags, you know, it's never their fault. You know, they're, they're loco and la cabeza. So they fight, you know, it's got this kind of like, kind of maybe this has been going on for a while, you know, like, you can you take me, boy, you know, kind of situation. Where, you know, for Jesse's part, I mean, he does kind of fuck him up a little bit, but jo Jody's just too much for him. And almost drops a fucking car in his head before Grandma Langell, you know, puts a stop to it. And decides to, you know, we got the stuff, let's get Tulip back. Now, in the meantime, Tulip's been in purgatory, which, like hell, is an actual place. Uh, and it's really cool. Because it's like, at least Tulip's Purgatory, it, it looks like a like an off-Broadway play with a laugh track from a sitcom all played out to her, like, worst memories of, like, her father and just, and her mother and, you know, her history of violence and uncontrolled rage and stuff like that that's going on. And it's really good and it just shows that even, you know, Gives Tulip so much more uh, character backstory that's just fantastic and, and sad. Really, really sad. Because, you know, you know, it's like, part of this has got to be like the memories of a child and how does a child remember things, you know, a little bit differently than they actually happen sometimes. Um, but it's just really well done. Uh, Ruth Naga always is such a great, she's such a good actress. Um, she's like, I didn't think much of her on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I don't think that was her fault. But on this, man, she is freaking phenomenal. And so, you know, just having to relive these terrible moments of violence and where she gets it from is really interesting. But, uh, so, we're like, we kind of keep going back and forth here between them, trying to bring her back. I love it when Cassidy calls T.C. You lightning struck little... Bog rat or something like that. It just <laughs> it's really it's a really good line. It happens really fast. But in the end, um, they Tulip is able to come back, but first she's in between that and she meets dog. Or God dressed up as a dog, however you want to put it. And he tells her she's one of the chosen you know, she's been chosen. And she's like, no shit. Like, oh, like not, like, no shit. Should have said it better. Yeah, there, that's better. And just as he's telling her what he, she, he wants, or whatever God wants to look to do, he says, get those, and poof, she's back and she's alive. So we don't know what that meant. I'm sure we'll find out over the course of the season. Um, but Tulip is back. She takes one look at Grandma Angel and she's like, who the hell are you? Um, typical, you know, Jesse, I mean, typical Tulip, you know, right away. Um, they're all happy to be back, but you can tell that even though she's back, the damage has kind of been done to a lot of these relationships and they're going to have, it's going to take time, I think, for them to get back to the way they were, if they ever can. Um, and here at the end, we have Jesse and, Grandma Langell talking about, you know, uh, you know, what he's going to have to do, you know, now that she's back. We don't know what that is, but I'm sure it has to do with trying to bring back her to her former station. Um, so that's about it. It's a really, really good episode. I wish I, uh, I hadn't been distracted by this. I might have uh, hit some more topics. I do. One of the things I like is that they don't drag out whether Grandma Langell has any good in her. You know, we don't have this, like, phony grandma routine that, that some shows would do to make you think a character is good, and then you get the rug pulled out from under you and you find out they're not. I like that they, you know right away that Grandma Langell is not a nice person. So, anyway, I think that is just about it. So, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe, uh, share. Uh, I am not very happy with this video in it <laughs> right now um, because I didn't know I was making it 
I didn't prepare very well, but I'm just, I was so excited that it was, I was on, I was watching it, that I kind of rushed this, but that's okay, because once I, once we get to next week, the second episode, uh, I'll be more polished and ready to go. So, as far as season premieres and videos go, I am sorry that this isn't better or funnier or whatever. But uh, I do want to thank everyone for the support that's been going on. I can't believe how much we've grown in just a little amount of time. It is not huge numbers like, oh my god, I'm like at a million subscribers or something. But um, I just want to thank everybody out there for give, you know, giving me a chance, making me uh, feel more motivated to make better videos. Not like this one. <laughs> But, you know, next week when, I, when I'm more ready for this, I will be hopefully more deserving of more views and more subscribers and stuff like that. So anyway, this is Robin Smirking Gun Review saying, thank God Preacher's back. Uh, it's going to make summer a little bit more fun. And we will see you on the next Preacher video. Bye.